welcome to Education Today. I'm Jonathan Zisch, School and Community Relations Coordinator for the Armstrong School District. First, I'd like to thank everybody at WIUP-TV for airing this broadcast. You know, practically everything in our high-tech world owes its existence to the electro-optics industry. Everything from grocery store scanners to lasers to robotics and TVs. Today we're going to talk about the exciting growth of the electro-optics industry right in our own backyard. On the show today, we have Patrick Huth, who is the Education Programs Coordinator for the Electro-Optics Center. On behalf of the Superintendent and School Board, I'd like to thank you for coming to Education Today and for being with us. Thank you. Before we start our discussion, let's take a look at some footage about how the electro-optics industry supports nearly every industry. The field of electro-optics is perhaps one of the most pervasive uh, that we have in our society today in that uh, electro-optics really has so many different applications in, in so many areas of our life. Um, it's also probably one of the least understood and most uh, recognized uh, fields of science or technology today. Lasers in particularly have many, many uses uh, in manufacturing and technology, but also in our own uh, everyday lives as well. The use of uh, many different optical systems in our everyday lives from digital cameras to camcorders to LCD screens and computer screens, flat screen televisions. Manufacturing of uh, very small electronic circuit components. One of the things that has really uh, changed the manufacturing process today is, is automation and robotics, uh, just the uh, machinery used in manufacturing everyday items, all uh, done with uh, automation. Given the, the amount of high technology in today's society, uh, electro-optics certainly plays a very big part in, uh, in not only uh, science technology, but also in, in each of our everyday lives. That was fascinating. The Electro-Optic Center's research supports the kind of technology we saw in that clip, and the center is right here in Armstrong County. My question for you, Patrick, is how did the Electro-Optic Center come to be located in Armstrong County? Please take us back to 1999 when it all started and bring us up to the present. Well, the, the center is really part of the vision of Representative John Murtha to, to make this area a center for uh, technology and, and research and development. Um, he also wanted to give the Department of Defense and Industry a place to go for electro-optics manufacturing technology. Um, back in 1999, the Office of Naval Research uh, issued a proposal to create a center uh, for electro-optics, and the uh, proposal was answered by Penn State University, who was awarded the, uh, the contract uh, back in 1999. It started the center with four employees and uh, an original contract of $5 million over five years. Um, and it's, it's grown considerably since then. Hmm. What is the Electro-Optic Center's goal or its mission? The Electro-Optic Center is a, uh, a center of electro-optics manufacturing technology. And what that means is um, it's a center for using electro-optics technology uh, to manufacture other things, so developing processes uh, for any type of manufacturing using electro-optics. But it's also a center for developing and manufacturing new electro-optic technology itself. So not only the technology that, that produces things, but ways of using the technology in, in other areas. Hmm. What kind of activities go on inside the electro-optic center on most days? Uh, we're, we're actually very busy. We have a number of technical projects that are currently underway. Um, we have uh, some of them that are dealing with um, the uh, thermal management in electro-optics components, how, how different components handle heat, for example, a diode array and how heating the, the element actually affects its performance. Um, we, we have a number of fa failure analysis programs that, that measure the performance of electro-optic components, and by that I mean lasers and uh, sensors and different materials that are used in optics, um, measuring their performance under a variety of conditions. Uh, we also have uh, projects that are in, uh, involved in what we call micro-machining. Um, for example, uh, using a laser, uh, a very fast laser to drill very small holes uh, in materials. Um, an application for that might be something like a, a new fuel injector for, for an engine that uses those very small holes. 
Uh, we have a lot of work in, in sensor technology, uh, things like uh, night vision uh, technology, thermal, thermal imaging technology, things like that. Oh. So do you actually make night vision goggles or, or you know, fuel injection systems at the Electro-Optic Center? How does that work? Not, not exactly, no. Okay. Our center basically does the research behind the technology, uh, figures out ways to, to improve the manufacturing of that technology, and then the actual the, the fabrication, the building of those systems are actually uh, turned over to other companies. Okay. It sounds very technical, of course, uh, and I appreciate the examples you gave. Of, of the uh, fuel injection system and the night, you know, night vision goggles. Would you please explain how the Penn State University and the United States Navy tie into the Electro Optics Center? Sure, that, that, that's something else that's, that's confusing once in a while. Um, we are a U.S. Navy Center of Excellence for Manufacturing Technology. Um, so most of the research that's done at the center benefits the Navy and benefits our other uh, partners in the Department of Defense. However, uh, the center is actually run by Penn State University. We, the Navy uses Penn State's infrastructure um, to, to use for the day-to-day -day operations of the center for things like uh, human resources and uh, um, facilities management and accounting and things like that. Hmm. It's amazing that we have this right in Armstrong County. Is this, is this correct to say that the Electro Optic Center for the entire nation is, is here in Armstrong County, or are there others like this in the nation? There, there are other uh, local centers of, of uh, optics technology, but, but Western Pennsylvania is quickly becoming uh, one of the leading centers in the country. And again, that's, that's thanks to people like Mirtha and, and their, their vision for the area. Um, the, the idea of the center is, is to attract other uh, manufacturers and other industry into the area that, that can uh, partner with us and, and uh, to do more of this manufacturing in electro-optics. Hmm. That's amazing. What, what, what impact do you hope to have in the next several years and in the long run? Um, I think the best impact that we can have is uh, to, to be sort of the, the magnet for those other electro-optics companies. Um, they, they can come in and, and create job opportunities and again help in the economic development of Western Pennsylvania. Um, we do that by uh, offering to share some of our resources, sharing our laboratory Space, sharing our equipment. Uh, if a company that, that's, that's a, in the region or a company that may think, be thinking of moving into the region has an interest in developing a new uh, type of manufacturing process, the Electro Optic Center is, is usually willing to help them with the prototype of that and, and some of the research behind it, oh. things like that. I was wondering if, if, based on what you just said, would you be able to just make up an, a hypothetical example of how a company could benefit from using the Electro Optic Center? Um, like if you just pick an industry and, and, and choose which, which one and how they would use the Electro-Optic Center to improve their process. How would it work in a, in a hypothetical example? Well, if, if, the, if let's, let's just say our biggest sponsor, the Navy, uh, has, a, has a problem that, that they need help with if they want to uh, develop a new um, night vision uh, system or, or a, a new guidance system for one of their torpedoes or, or some other weapon system. Uh, it might be something as simple as a new way to produce lighting inside one of their ships or submarines. Um, they, would, they would contact the, the center with this problem and, and um, we would either, either address it ourselves or we're also the, the center of what's called the Electro-Optics Alliance, which is uh, a nationwide organization that, 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 that we run um, for anyone interested in electro-optics technology. So there's close to 300 uh, partners in that alliance right now. Um, many of them are industry, some are universities, other government agencies, et cetera, that um, we would work together to, to solve that problem for the Navy or for, for any other industry similarly. And would the Navy get like a finished product at the end or, or what would they get? They, they, they would get the, the, the research and the technology that would make the next step in that the production of that product possible. Okay. You know, one of our Elderton High School physics teachers, Christy Orlowski, invited an IUP professor named Jim Sherman to talk to her class about electro-optics in the spring of 2003. The following school year, the same group of motivated students presented a lesson on Snell's Law to high school students throughout Armstrong County. That law explains why objects appear to bend when they're seen through different media, such as why a pencil stuck into a glass of water appears to bend. 
it's another crucial as aspect of this is education outreach. Would you please give us an overview of the Electro-Optics Center's educa education outreach efforts? Sure. The, the, the Navy, of course, runs many uh, research centers, um, but ours is unique in that we have uh, a mandate in our original agreement with the Navy to do an education outreach program. The, the, the three areas that the Navy uh, asked Penn State to address when, in establishing this center was, first of all, to establish the center. Um, and to, of course, run the technical programs and the research that, that we do, but also to do education outreach. So that's, that's a very important part of what we do uh, at the center. Um, our education program is basically focused on, in three areas. Uh, the first, um, K through 12, kindergarten through, through 12th grade, we work uh, closely with a lot of the schools and school districts in the region. Um, specifically doing education outreach programs in electro-optics, but also uh, in a broader sense, all of science, math, technology, and engineering. We really try to uh, get students involved in, in science and math as much as we can. Um, second, area of second area of education outreach would be the post-secondary or higher education um, area. We, we work closely with a lot of the uh, local schools, the colleges and universities in the area. Um, we collaborate on some curriculum development projects. Um, again, we, we offer our use of our equipment and laboratory space to them. We, we uh, occasionally will have students come and work at the optics, Electro Optics Center for uh, credit as part of their uh, school program. Um, so uh, IUP, Pitt, uh, Carnegie Mellon, um, Clarion are, are some of the, the, the partnerships that we have in, in the region. And uh, th that, that's, that, that's the second area. The third area is, is in actually workforce development. Um, again, both in the electro optics industry and the Department of Defense, providing some specialized training uh, courses for people who, who may or may not be in, in the electro optics industry. But um, th as an example of some of that specialized training, uh, recently we, uh, we had a, a program at our center uh, for machinists in the area that, that may be investigating ways to use the high-speed lasers in uh, the tool and die industry. Mm. Um, you know, electro-optics and, and machining are, are somewhat different, but a lot of the processes that are involved are, are similar. So that's how we were able to offer that, that training as part of our workforce <laughs> development program. So that's, those three areas are basically the, the outreach that we do. So you work on school students, K through 12, post-secondary, uh, you know, students and workforce development. Correct. Trying to hit all areas. Um, could we zoom in on the K to 12 aspect? Uh, you know, what are your programs for kindergartners through 12th grade? Um, we have a number of programs for, for students, uh, for teachers, uh, career and guidance counselors, and as well as administrators. Um, we're also looking at some, some programs for specialty areas. For example, a, um, a special program for physics teachers that, that may need some more background or some more resources to use in teaching optics in their classrooms. Um, often we find that, that optics is an area that's, that's not often covered in a typical high school uh, curriculum, even, even in physics. Um, it's something, and unless the, the teacher or the instructor has a personal uh, interest in it or, or some, some personal knowledge of the, of the field, it's something that you don't uh, experience, the kids don't experience a lot of it. Um, so we try to, to give the students as much exposure to optics as we can, let them know of some of the opportunities that are out there. Um, we do that in a number of ways. We have, um, every year at our center, we have a, a student forum where we invite students from local schools to come and participate in a program where we'll bring in speakers from uh, some of the local universities, some industry speakers, uh, give them some hands-on uh, experience with some of the technology. Uh, we also have a speakers bureau that, that does school visits. We'll go out and do, um, if a school has a career day or, or just a, a teacher may invite, um, with a special interest, to invite one of, our, one of our scientists or engineers to go out and talk to their to their class just to, again, generate some excitement and some interest in, 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 in uh, science and in math and technology. You spoke about optics. Um, what, what is, generally speaking, what is optics in a, in a high school setting? Like what would uh, students who would learn about optics in high school, what, what type of topics would that cover? Well, you, you mentioned a, a good one is Snell's Law and oh, okay. uh, the way lenses work, uh, the way uh, lenses bend and focus light, um, mirrors, reflection, refraction, diffraction, um, pretty, pretty, pretty basic uh, concepts in, in, in optical systems.
how we see things, basically. Is, exactly. Is the basis yeah, the, of a, a, a general study of light, uh, what makes up light or electromagnetic radiation, uh, the, the, the spectrum. Hmm. Okay. Waves. And before high school, you know, why are middle school students at the crucial age for deciding about science careers? Why not high school? Well, um, you know, uh, high school is, is certainly an important part of our, our, our outreach. We, we do offer uh, programs for high schools, and, and not, uh, not just the, the gifted and talented students either. We have, we have programs for, for students of all levels. But, but um, the, the thing in middle school is that we try to assist students that are in middle school to, to help them uh, plan their, their career path or their, their coursework path through high school uh, to help them develop a good basis in, in science and math so that they're, they're prepared when they leave high school to go on and further study a career in science. Mm. And that, that, that all starts in middle school with that preparation and that, that coursework planning. Sure, when you're taking your math and your algebra, it, it all lays the foundation. Exactly. Um, how do we break that misconception that science is just for engineers? Why isn't that true? Well, we live in a, in a very uh, high-tech society today. Um, the the, the techn technological revolution that, that's occurred in the last few years has just been amazing. I mean, you don't, you don't need to be very old to remember a time when no one thought we would all have home computers and high-speed internet access at home or uh, satellite TV or satellite radio, things like that that just didn't exist not that long ago. Um, so to, to, for our high-tech society today, we really need a, a population that is very scientifically literate and has a good, solid foundation in science and in math. But um, I, I think more than that, that, that when you study science, you, you, you gain other skills that are even more beneficial. For example, uh, taking a course in, in any science teaches you uh, skills like problem solving and creative thinking and um, critical thinking, rather, um, logic, things like that. And those are, those are important skills to have no matter what, you, what career path you take. Uh, those, those types of things are always helpful to have. Yes, analytical skills in demand exactly. in our 21st century world. Well, what type of careers are there in electro-optics? Uh, in electro-optics, there are careers, uh, as of course, like we have at the center of many scientists and researchers, um, engineers. Uh, there's, there's careers in education as, as teachers or instructors in optics. Um, jobs from, from, uh, in manufacturing, um, for everything from uh, basic uh, tech, the technician level all the way up through, through PhD. So mm. there's, there's a wide range of, of, of jobs. Um, but the thing about optics is, is it's very pervasive. Um, in that it, it, it optics is is everywhere. Um, the, the, it shows up in many fields. So you could you could have a background in optics and and be in just about any type of career. There's there's optics in the, the medical field and health sciences, in uh, communications, uh, defense of course, homeland security and law enforcement, uh, it, on and on and on. There, it, the optics is is very broad spectrum of careers. Mm. Well, starting in high school, what courses should be taken there? and in college to be positioned for an electro-optics career? Well, of course, we, we would require a, a uh, very strong foundation in science and math. Again, those are, those are very important, of course. Um, so chemistry, physics, um, your algebra, geometry, trigonometry, your math courses, and even you know, as, as you get towards a junior and senior level, uh, your advanced science classes, your, your calculus, you know, those, those types of things are very important. Um, but that's not to say that, that you know, a student should neglect other courses um, because they're all important. The things like uh, English and literature courses, those uh, are very important. You, it's essential that, that people need to know how to read and write well. Communication is essential. Um, things like art and music, those courses are, are important as well because they teach uh, creativity. And I think for any scientist, uh, one of their most important uh, traits is to have a good imagination. So all those courses really are, are very important. Well said. Um, something that you had mentioned uh, makes me curious. The technician level careers, what's, what's an example of something that a technician might do in electro-optics as opposed to an engineer? Well, you know, all of this uh, research and all of the, the materials and the manufacturing that, that, that goes on uh, all requires a very you know, high level of uh, very 
specialized equipment that, that, that you know, the, the, uh, a laser, you know, and, and all that, all equipment needs to be maintained. It all needs to be, you know, calibrated from time to time. It all needs, you know, uh, a lot of work done that's not just the theoretical research and developing the new products and thing. It's just, it's just basically uh, operating the machinery, the machinery that, that we use. Hmm. Okay. Um, tell me about some hands-on science activities the Electro Optics Center offers to students through your student forums. Um, we have gotten involved in that in, in a number of ways. Um, a few examples would be the, uh, the partnership we had with the uh, University of Rochester's Center for Optics Manufacturing. Uh, they developed a kit, they called it the Optics Suitcase, and it's just a uh, very nice set of materials that a, a school could access, uh, some laboratory equipment, some, some simple demonstrations for the classroom, and, and some, some laboratory activities for students um, to, to, again, give the, the teachers and the students access to this area of optics that they may or may not uh, have, have a lot of access to. Okay. We have time for one more question. Uh, how would someone in the public learn about opportunities in this area? Um, probably the, the best way to learn about our center is uh, to attend the ArmTech uh, showcase that happens every year in Armstrong County in, uh, in August. Uh, that's okay. a, a place where local industry uh, all gathers together to kind of showcase their, 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 um, their businesses and, and uh, we'll, we're of course there, as are a lot of other uh, defense contractors and industries from uh, here and around the country who are maybe looking to uh, expand their business into the area or looking for partners with other small companies and uh, it makes a very good uh, place to learn about what's going on in Armstrong okay. County. So the ArmTech Showcase coming up in August, I assume details might be on the Electro-Optics web sites? Yeah, we'll, we'll probably have something as the date gets closer. Electro-Optics.org. Electro-Optics.org. Thank correct. you, yes. Well, that's our show for today. Patrick, thank you for sharing your time with us to learn more about the Electro Optics Center. My pleasure. Thank you. Also, I'd like to thank Ren Steele, who teaches television production classes at West Shemokin High School, and his counterpart from Elderton High School, Bobby Hamill. Both of their students did a fine job as today's film crew. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District, where the education of tomorrow is on education today. Until next time, have a safe and enjoyable week. the core reading and math curriculum, teachers received extensive training on the Plato learning systems, which included full day sessions as well as building level support utilizing technology mentors. Plato Learning Systems teachers created specific learning pathways for students to maximize learning opportunities and began to analyze ongoing assessment information to make instructional decisions to ensure student success. I'm John Zish. 
one of the hosts of Education Today. Here's a look at what we have coming up in our next batch of shows. The week of March 28th, we'll look at the new face of physical education with Catanning Area Middle School teacher Lisa Heilman. Phys Ed is not just about sports anymore. In some cases, students are reading and writing in gym class. The week of April 4th, we'll talk with two Ford City High School teachers who have spent a few Saturday mornings preparing high school students for the new SAT. For details, keep an eye on the community marquee at WIEP-TV, Channel 20 Adelphia, which carries our program. You can also check the Armstrong School District website at www.asd.k12.pa.us for updates. Until next time, have a safe and enjoyable week.